Hey, it's Jacob back with another pro tip. This one is pro tip 57, creating a custom compliance report. So I use custom compliance reports to report on Windows services, uh, certain files, certain software, certain registry keys to um, see if they have them or not. Normally those come in separate reports but I like to combine them all into one. So first off, we're going to do that in Land Super Sites. So we are going to go to the Reports menu, and we're going to create a new report. Now, Land Super Sites uses a database called MongoDB and a language. Um, it's called Aggregation Syntax. And that is based on JavaScript, and it uses a feature called pipelining. Um, pipelining will take a stage or a data set, and it will start and give you results uh, at the top, first one. And it chains down. So the results from the first step will then have more modifications or um, filters or groups, um, then those results will be displayed and then it will keep trickling down uh, to the next line. So that is why in Landsweeper Sites, you need to put everything on top. And so it chains down. So first thing, let's create a Windows Server Compliance Report. So we'll name it. And first thing you do is select your fields. So we will choose fields, and this is for Windows Server, so it's devices and software. And we will um, pick asset name we will pick mm, software name because we're going to check for a piece of software we are going to check for a windows service so that will be down to services Caption. If you can't find it here, you can always choose to find it down here. You can remove this and go down to services and check it here. Next, we will have um, looking at a list here Windows name. And we will put uh, the OU because I want to see what OU the reports are, the AD organizational unit. And we will do file path, full path under the file properties because I'm going to be checking for um, a specific file if it exists or not. And also if the file is found those two things next thing is IP address we want the IP address of the asset and we want the asset domain I'm going pretty fast but this is a kind of a complicated thing uh, asset domain so um, we also want asset type name and again, if you don't know it, you can just put uh, asset type and go through the results. And we will say last seen, which is root. We don't want air watch. And we will say last tried. And there we go. So once you select those fields, 
you have everything with those fields. So there's all my assets. I've got my Nintendo Switch right there. Uh, I've got my VMware servers and some Linux. And keep scrolling down. You got more Linux. And it has a whole bunch of the same assets because I chose software name and other things which are not just a single record because there's multiple software for each asset. So, but don't worry if you see duplicates in here. So the next step, we are going to filter and we are going to do, we're gonna filter on asset type. So as I said, it, it cascades down. So we're gonna say asset type name is equal to Windows. So there is just Windows machines. And again, it has multiple entries for a single one because I have multiple services, multiple files here that it did that it has. So don't worry about that either. And then we will add as asset type name equal to Windows and Windows name. We're going to say contains Win2 or Windows 2000, whatever. So in this case, it has all my Windows 2019s. It would have 2016, et cetera just by putting that little check right there. Next thing is we need to look for a specific file. And in this case, I'm gonna use Internet Explorer. So we're gonna add another filter and we're gonna say file path, the full file path, and I'm gonna cheat here. And copy and paste. That's the, um, I need to say equal to, Sorry about that. Um, then the file path. So there we go. Now we still get duplicate records because there are a whole lot of services on each server. There is the filter. So the next step is we are going to add a another uh, fields uh, section. And that is because we are going to make our custom fields. And these aren't fields that exist as a normal field. We are going to make a field that's gonna have a check. It's gonna say, does it have this or does it not? So for custom fields that don't exist, you have to go into the custom code editor. So we're going to add, add a section for fields. And we are going to collapse these to make more room. And like I said, you're going to have to go into the custom. So right here, I'm going to paste this into notepad plus plus. because it gives you um, color coding, which is always good. And also it tells you where your brackets are. So in order to do this, you can see here that it passed the field names, it passed it down. And for the sake of time, I am going to copy and paste now there are the uh, fields that I passed down right here and again that's from pipelining 
Now, right here is where we are going to add our checks. So, first thing we're going to do for this example is check for the land sweeper agent called LS agent. So, you define your field and you put in a condition that if the software name is in this section right here and the software name is called LS agent, then yes, uh, else it's not there. So we're going to put no. And that's because in the report, the finalized report, I want a yes or no. Is it there? Yes. If it's not, no. Same thing for this one right here. So we're going to check for Windows Defender on the servers. Usually it should have it regardless of if you use it or not. But this is just for example where you can check for a service. The first one is software. And the second one is services. Now, if you forget what these are, you can always go up to the fields and pick them out right here. So it's a condition if the service, if the caption of the service, which is the, um, the display name for the service, if it is Windows Defender Antivirus Service, which is the name of it for Windows servers, if it's there, then yes, else no. And again, with this language, you have to watch your brackets and your commas before you do your next field. So that's basically it. Um, is if you get used to the syntax, it's relatively easy um, once I've figured out the syntax. So it's a condition. If it's here, then yes or no. So I'm going to copy this back. Oops, I have to edit the code. So once you edit it, you can't go back to the graphic, uh, the graphic part, but we have to do this because like I said, we're doing custom fields. Uh, yes, it's irreversible. All right. We're now officially in irreversible land. Okay, so I pasted right in here and you get your results. If anything's wrong, it will have an error like, let me forget a comma. It'll say errors found. So let's put it back. So now it's time for the next step, which is grouping these because you see here, it still has all of these services. So we need to add a grouping step. So for the grouping step, unfortunately, I cannot show you the GUI because this is also customized but we will we will take a look at this in notepad so the grouping is we're going to group by asset name ip address the ou and the has internet explorer yes or no because we just had a um, is the path in the file found or not so it's, it passes a yes or no there. Now, for the ones that uh, have to do a check and it has multiple, uh, yeah, multiple services and you have multiple um, files or not files, multiple services and multiple software names, you do a max of that field. We only want the top field of that or maximum 
Um, it's just something you have to put in the syntax, and then we're going to follow it up with the last seen and last tried. And here are the display names. So we're going to copy and you can do asset name OU software name just to show you that it will put it it will generate some code for you and we're going to go and edit the code here and we're going to paste see there's where it puts it so you could start here but we're going to paste this right here and so it will create or or group it so there's no duplicates we have just what we need uh, whether it has Internet Explorer, has LS Agent, has Defender Service right here. And it has a yes or no. So there we go. We will save it. And we will say it is hardware. We could choose security. Or we'll say hardware. We will run it, and there you go. So this is using Mongo and pipelining to do the cascading and doing the little conditional checks. But remember, you have to add the fields at the top and the appropriate filters as you go. And then at the end, the grouping. So that's the Landsweeper Sites uh, report. I will uh, show you or write about the on-premise report in the article for the sake of time, but I will show it to you real quick. It is the same thing here. I have has Internet Explorer, has LS Agent, and has the Defender service. And you can tell here, I don't have the LS Agent on my domain controller. I don't want to put an agent on the domain controller even though it might be okay. Don't want to mess that up. So right here, I will quickly show you. For on-prem, we use Microsoft SQL Server. Sites is Mongo. On-prem is Microsoft SQL Server. And the syntax is MS SQL. And I will show you this in Notepad real quick. And we will do language SQL just to color it, makes it easy. So what you can do for this is basically you can pick a report of missing software, pick a report for missing a registry key or a report for a register key in general and uh, or a Windows service. You can pick those from existing reports. Um, in my article, you'll be able to download this report. So I won't get too far into that. The key for the compliance report for on-prem is what's called joining on a select statement. Normally you join on a particular table, but in this case, you're going to join on a select statement, which is basically joining on a report. So if you make a report with a um, missing or all services or missing service or a particular service, you can put it in as a join. And what you want to do is a left join because it'll either be there or not. Left joins have uh, you left join and it's a, uh, every record and it uh, you can have say 50 assets and you can have 30 asset or 30 records and it will make a correlation and say missing 
we have it. Here's the 20 that are missing. Oh, it won't be there. So basically, here's one right here. So we're going to left join a normal report where we have IP address, OU, and that's from the table assets and the table AD computer. But you want to left join. We'll do this one right here. So we'll do Windows Antivirus Server. So you'll join on left join parentheses a select statement, which is your basic report. So in this case, select top um, records just to limit the records. Uh, you want your table services. You just want the asset ID. So if you make a report, you can take the report separately and remove all the fields except for asset ID because we want to say, is the asset ID in there? Yes or no. So right here, we uh, select from table services and enter join it on table services UNI to get the caption, which is the um, common display name. So right here, is our little join on the defender, join on the services report there. So what you do up here is you do a case statement where the join you did dot asset ID, is it there or not? If it's no, then no, we don't have it. And otherwise, yes, it is there. And then we name it right here. So this one is complicated as well. But there you go. There's your results. So basically what I want to say is for on-premise for these multiple checks in a single report, you want to left join down at the bottom with a subquery or a, an embedded select. So you left join on a select, you put your little report in there. So there you have it. I will have all of this written up in the blog article for you to um, take a look at. And uh, I know this one was kind of uh, confusing. It's a lot to show in a, in a pro tip video, but I will have it in the article. And I will also have a link to download the sample report and um, a link or um, report for the cloud that would be or will be in your reports. That's it. Thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.